Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 37 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is how is DNA fingerprinting done? How exactly the process is done? So the first step is the DNA sample is isolated and purified. So from where is that sample collected in the form of a blood sample? So a blood sample of uh, maybe the person who wants to get a DNA fingerprinting done or let us suppose if a crime scene has happened. So in that case, a, a blood sample of the murder or of the person who has been murdered. So, so all these things can be taken and from where DNA sample can be isolated and then purified. Then STRs are isolated by polymerase chain reaction. So even from the DNA sample, you can actually isolate the STRs, that is the short tandem repeats. Now looking at the arrangement of genes in the short tandem repeats, only you will be able to identify whether uh, whatever it is, the relationship or the criminal, etc. So in order to isolate this, there is a method called polymerase chain reaction by which the STRs can be isolated. So what does this polymerase chain reaction do? It amplifies specific targeted samples. Now here the target is the STRs. So STRs are amplified, that is STRs are increased in the sample and then it becomes easier to, to isolate the STRs. As I said, STRs are the short tandem repeats. So they are shorter, but they can survive better than that of VNTRs. So STRs, once they are isolated, now they are separated using electrophoresis. This is again a very important step because this is the step where we can actually look at the distribution of the STR, how they are distributed in different individuals. So what happens during electrophoresis? In this process, electric current is passed through the DNA. Now, when electric current is passed, the heavier STRs, what is heavier STR? Like you saw that some short tandem repeats can be long, whereas some of them can be short. Now, it is very obvious that the one which is longer will be heavier as well. And the one which is shorter will be lighter as well. Now, whichever is heavier, they will move slower. They will not be able to move faster. So as a result, they will get uh, dispersed in a different location than that of the lighter ones because the lighter ones will move faster when electric current is passed through it. So we will get somewhat like this. Let us suppose this is the father, son and the stranger, the same three persons. Now if you would actually try to look at how exactly these STRs uh, get dispersed when electric current is passed through it, you will see. So let us suppose this is the process of electrophoresis. So what happens is these STR samples which were isolated, they were mixed with an uh, mixed with a gel and then they were taken in within the apparatus for electrophoresis where an electric potential were applied. So let us suppose this is negative this side and positive on this end. So this side is all negative, this side is all positive. So what will happen to the STRs? Now the heavier STRs, they will remain on the top. So the heavier STRs will remain on the top but the lighter STRs will tend to come down because the lighter STRs will be able to travel more. So they will start coming this side, but the heavier STRs will not be able to travel more. Now, similarly, in case of the father also, the STRs will move accordingly, right? So even though they will not be identical, but we will see that the father and son will have at least similar alignment. But when you look at the stranger, his alignment is going to be completely different. So by looking at this kind of a pattern, you can actually see that the stranger is an alignment completely different, but the father and the son has relatively similar alignments. So we can say that they are both related. So this is how the concept of DNA fingerprinting works. Now all these processes which take place, they need their required apparatus and everything. But in this lesson, we just wanted to give you an idea about how these things work. So now let us look at a very important application. So let us suppose that a murder has taken place somewhere and now uh, the purpose is to find out who is the criminal, right? So how is that done? So let us suppose a blood sample is being given and this blood sample has been taken from the scene of crime.
So that means this blood sample, th this which shows that this blood sample belongs to the one who is the criminal. Now there are two suspects. Let us suppose the stranger and the father. These are the two suspects who would have murdered that person. So how do we get to know? So first of all, the DNA fingerprinting procedure is being done on this blood sample which has been received from the crime scene. So now when the process of electrophoresis is done, so first of all that isolating, purification, PCR, all those things are done. And after that, when electrophoresis is performed, it is seen that the STRs, so the STRs get dispersed or get distributed somewhat in this fashion. So this is how the S, uh, blood sample STR gets distributed. So now blood sample again is collected from the stranger and also from the father. And again, the same process of DNA fingerprinting is performed. And in case of the father, it is seen that this is how the sample came out to be. So this is how it came out to be. So if you compare it with that of the blood sample, do you see, find that they are similar? They are not really similar, right? So we can assume that the father is innocent. Now let us look at the stranger's uh, dispersion or the stranger's thing. So his blood is also taken and then again the same thing has been performed. And in this case it is observed that this is how the distribution looks like. So if you compare this distribution with that of the blood sample, you can actually see that it exactly matches. So that means this blood, blood sample belongs to this stranger. So that means this stranger is the criminal. So this is how exactly the process of DNA fingerprinting works. So similarly, in order to prove paternity, for example, you would have seen that somebody who claims that this baby is not his so in that case also this kind of DNA fingerprinting is done. So there also a blood sample of the kid is taken, blood sample of the father is taken. And when this electrophoresis is performed, if both the distribution matches, that means that that uh, boy is his son. But if the distribution doesn't match at all, in that case he is not the father. So that is how the paternal uh, test is also being done. So this was a brief introduction to DNA fingerprinting. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.